Welcome back. The first trio of MPs for what could be the last full week of sittings before the Commons adjourns for the summer. They've gathered in the studio. The suspense. Getting a little, a little tear well up there. Kevin is <laughs> crazy here. All right. Marco Mendicino is a Liberal Parliamentary Secretary from Toronto. Karen Vecchio, a Conservative MP from Southwestern Ontario. Nathan Cullen, an NDP MP from Northern, beautiful British Columbia. Well, you're all beautiful areas oh, in your own way. Thanks, but, but particularly BC. I mean, now, you've got this thing going in the House now. Yeah. You, you, we discussed this briefly on the show yesterday. All mm -hmm. these parliamentary officers of parliament just are not being filled. Like, right. there's literally four that four, are being, now five because five. languages didn't get filled. So because what's what's the progress? Are you getting this thing through, or is the PM going to say no? Well, it's, it's, it felt okay. I mean, okay, so we put the proposal forward. Well, you, first of all, we all know how important officers of parliament are. <laughs> You've yeah. had them on the show yeah. many, many times. Canadians rely on them because they're a nonpartisan, fair voice on checking the power of government, right. spending, and all the rest. So we, we saw with the latest language commissioner the problem that was evident. We wanted to fix it. So we have an opposition day today. We said, take the process as it is right now, clearly broken, move it to a process that allows everybody to have a say. The parliament still has the final say, hiring, firing, and that's how it works. The government came forward, the Jagger came forward and said, I have a problem with this part of it. So the Conservatives actually moved and helped us move an amendment. We <coughs> amended our motion today to address the Liberal concern. And I just came out of the House of Commons, and they've got another concern now, and they're not going to vote for it. Oh. oh. Yeah. So that's kind of, it was feeling so good, Don. You know, like, we're, feel this, love and <laughs> was, well, the Parliament should do these things. These watchdogs are incredibly important. There's a whole, yeah. they have an appointment problem within the Liberals. We were trying to help them fix it and do it properly, and, and unfortunately, that didn't and you come had to fruition. You know, brothers Support in arms us. here with yeah. uh, the Liberal. You're on side with this? Absolutely on side because what we saw last week with uh, Marianne Mayer, it was really important that she did step down and I applaud her for that. But this isn't going to be the first time. It definitely has been the last time. And uh, as, it, as it moves forward, I think there does need to be more scrutinization and done by the opposition parties, whether it's as a committee or whether it's within those committees. I think it does need to be looked at because we have seen a lot of failure from this government so far. Oh, that's oh. kind of a baited way of getting to Margo here. <laughs> Don't take the bait, Margo. All right. Margo, you've got the bait. Go for it. Uh, well, look, I mean, I think we always are, are looking for ways in which we can raise the bar on, on an open and merit-based uh, appointments process. Uh, but the, the, the trouble with the, the nomination that was put forward by my colleague Nathan is that it essentially is redundant. Uh, there already is uh, scrutinizing when it comes to um, officers of parliament. They go to committees. Those committees then make um, inquiries into the qualifications and the suitability. Stop counting the desk. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I was just thinking. The suitability thinking. of those appointments. Mm -hmm. And um, and so this, this would just simply be adding another layer uh, to it and replicating uh, an exercise which is already occurring at the committee level. Yeah. So the, 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 trouble, the, the trouble with that is obviously will create more delay and lead to some additional filibustering. And I know that my, what I hear in my community is that people want to see these positions and these vacancies filled. In fact, we hear that from the opposition. So I don't know how adding <laughs> seconds, I don't know how adding seconds <laughs> okay. to the clock does that. But let me just say a last little word on this. Very quickly. Um, the important thing to bear in mind is that when you look at the overall work that we have done on public appointments, the news is good. 70% 70 uh, 70 of, of those appointments have been women. Oh, stop it. Uh, tw Sorry, I know. I'll it's it's hard for him to stay hard. Hard. Yeah. It's hard. I'm yeah. containing myself. 70% women. Good job. Uh, and additional right. advances too, in, in, uh, in racialized right. okay. communities okay. as well as indigenous right. communities. Right. I'll give you a quick rebuttal here. So seven months ago, the Prime Minister got up and said, there's an appointments process. We have this huge backlog. Four or five months later, the backlog had grown by 80% uh -huh. after he said we fixed it. So they haven't fixed the appointments. They've got a, some kind of performance anxiety issue going on where they just can't get to the place of actually naming the person, getting on with the job. They, their, first, their, first, their first big appointment process, their first big one, they put in a partisan who, by her own admission, was too partisan to even apply to the Senate and said she was in a conflict of interest and couldn't investigate the prime minister. What do we do yeah. if these guys do the same thing on ethics or the I elections? All of that, I was just very, saying, very adding, adding another oh, layer boy. and more that time isn't, isn't going to make the we tried to help you out. It might be necessary. I tried to ask you out, though, because we sound like we're in the silly season, just the oh. four of us maybe oh. up there on Parliament Hill. Karen, we got there. We got this problem coming down the pipe where there's going to be like two days of nonstop voting mm -hmm. because your party wants all these 
What the heck's going on? Just, well, we're, that's we're, not we're, efficient use of time, is no, it? No, but we're looking at the estimates right now. And, so and you're at war, though, with these liberals. Let's be right? honest. It, it's, it's using all the tools that we have in our toolbox right now to say, you are not going to ram through these standing order changes that they've been putting, saying that they're going to. And I am so proud of Candace Bergen and the work that she's done with Mary Rankin, the NDP. You won't be so proud of her when you're at hour no, 30 no, of voting. You know something? <laughs> we have to. Our job is to make sure that whether it's Parliament today or Parliament in the future, that a huge changes like this can't be rammed through by the government. So we do have to stand strong on this, and we are united with the NDP on this, that we are standing strong on this. Merged. I know it's, it's well, <laughs> so we were, we merged to work together to do right, parliament. Quick, uh, I think this is what they call a failure to communicate, that the government has said, this is, we want to change the House of Commons this way, this way, this way. This is their second time, as you know, Don, yeah, yeah, doing yeah. this, trying to force it through parliament. Of course, opposition pushed back. When the Liberals were in opposition, and Prime Minister Harper tried to do something not quite like this, but similar, the very same tactic of many votes delaying over time, causing some pain back mm -hmm. to the government, saying, work with us, figure out a way to negotiate these changes, because the rules apply to all of us as parliamentarians. Yeah. I don't know why the Liberals have such a hard time with sunny ways. You've and been very work. restrained today, Marco. I commend well, you. you. So would you thank like you. to respond to the concerns of your colleagues here? Well, I think there's a consistent theme that has run through the first two subjects, and that is that the opposition want to create delay. <laughs> and what Canadians want is for the government to address the business of Canadians. <laughs> and there's more than a, a hint of some inside baseball going on here. Most people in my community, they're not really interested interested in filibustering. They're not interested in, de uh, in delay. What they are interested in is, is a well and proper functioning parliament. And that's what we try to work uh, towards every day. And we do try to work with the opposition. There have been a number of opposition motions where the government has supported and, and lent its voice to initiatives which have been brought, brought forward, whether it's in the Yazidis context yeah. or more recently when it's come to <laughs> developing a sustainable econ economy by supporting an opposition motion when it came to the Kinder Morgan pipeline. So we are, we are trying to be collaborative of where we can, but delaying does not get the business that we have been put here uh, to do get done. Then right. maybe the standing orders don't have to be the priority right now. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. I do want to bring a <laughs> more serious conversation, though. This, this hate crime numbers, they're not a terrifically high in total, but they certainly mm -hmm. seem to be coming more Muslim focused. Uh, and I'm curious what your, you people are hearing in your writings and what you're getting from your constituents. Mark, I'll start with you. I mean, I, sure. is this something you're picking up? On the doorstep? I am, and I'll tell you, in my own community, just uh, last week, there was another incident uh, uh, of anti-Semitism at the Baycrest Hospital, just about five minutes away from where I live. Deeply troubled by it. I think we have to condemn uh, any act of, of anti-Semitism, any act of discrimination uh, or racism right across the board. And, you know, I'm mindful of the report that came out from Statistics Canada. I know that your last guest on the panel uh, pointed out uh, that there have been dramatic increases uh, in discrimination discrimination against certain identifiable identifiable communities mm -hmm. like the Muslim community. The Jewish community is another community where we have seen very historically high levels of, of discrimination. And that's why motions like M103 are so important, where we all get behind uh, eliminating all forms of discrimination. Canada is an inclusive, diverse country. As the Prime Minister often says, that's a strength and not a weakness, and we should all be proud to live here. What are you hearing, Karen? You know, unfortunately, I do hear the same thing, mm -hmm. whether it, what religion it is, what color your skin may be, uh, where you come from, the culture just culture differences. The thing is, it's our job to be the leaders. Um, I know I was at a dinner, a Ramadan dinner in London. Our job is to reach out and to build those bridges. And, you know, when it comes to humans, a human is a, I'm going to use a, a lot, a human is a human is a human. <laughs> but the bottom line is, we have to do better and we need to make sure that we stay focused and unite. I know our party is working very hard with our outreach and that's what we need to continue to do. There's right. no place in Canada for this. I mean, this. You're, you're in a more remote place. This is mostly concentrated mm -hmm. in big cities, but I'm sure your colleagues no, we are... Have, yeah, we have, we have Muslim community up north as well. I, I guess it reminds me that words matter, right? Mm -hmm. And that when you see rhetoric, particularly coming out of Washington and some other places around the world, the rise of the quote-unquote alt-right or whatever yeah. that is, uh, those words sometimes turn into actions. Some mm -hmm. people feel more encouraged that they can yell at somebody on a bus for how they're dressed or who they happen to be. Um, I, I, you know, they're not going to find a lot of distinction between us. The, the communication, reaching out, having cultural communities talk to one another. But it's also condemning it when we see it on the world stage. Right. When we see policies, when we see statements from other world leaders that obviously infiltrate into our conversations here in Canada. It's also required of our leadership to stand up to it and speak out against it. And just, well, just, just if I could, uh, to put a, a finer point on it, um, this past week, my, my colleague Arnold Chan uh, yeah. gave an address to the House where he talked about raising the level of civility in the House of Commons. I think this is an area where we can all 
agree mm -hmm. that civility is so important, that being unified behind our, our joint effort to eliminate all forms of discrimination mm -hmm. is, is, is an opportunity for us to live up to that high standard all that right. he continues to set every day. Do we see you guys next week, or are you gone off to wait? You, you, you want more silly season? Maybe here. Here. <laughs> just, oh, oh, we hope you, you're here. You're always fine. We don't have any on the show. All right. Till next week, then. Till next week.